Um, let's start up here actually we're gonna skip lane mapping for just a second and we'll go to lanes in pool let's say for instance we're gonna set up an example here where we've actually got 10 lanes in the pool so I'm gonna hit the number two key on the uh, 10 keypad down below it's gonna bring up a dialog box down here that asks me the number of lanes in pool and I'm gonna put in 10 and hit enter notice it changes to 10 up here and then it's gonna say down here on number three the lanes used as commonly happens we can drop lane 1 and lane 10 uh, and we can use 2 through 9 basically as the lanes in the pool now you could set this to whatever you want I can change it to you know I can change this to actually 10 and so lane now I show 10 lanes down here in the display if you notice um, and go back up here and change it to 8 lanes so for our example we're gonna set this up so that we're using just 8 lanes of the pool out of 10 possible so now if I go up to lane mapping what it is is it shows the the lanes are normal number one if I want them that way if I want to reverse the lanes I hit on number two which then swaps it so what is displayed on the screen down here as lane one is physically lane 10 in the pool now keep in mind this a lot of this has to do with how you are running uh, your your pool whether you're running it off a cable harness or whether it's with our index system uh, our typical our standard is for when we have an index system that the lane closest to the wall plate is physically wired up as lane one now that may not be the way you run it but that is the way we wired up so that if we ever had to in an emergency situation say someone you know lack total lack of maintenance or whatever and we've got a, a deck plate that's not working we could roll out a cable harness the on the cable harness the pod the lane pod that is closest to the timer is going to be lane one so that's why we do the why we wire up the wall plates the way we do so when I reversed the lanes notice that I because I had 10 lanes in the pool it reversed and put ten, lane 10 as the physical f lane 1 was displayed on the screen. I can go back and change it to normal this way. Now, if I'm on a normal, on a, on a, on a kind of a, a typical situation where I've got 10 lanes in the pool but I only want to run 8 out of those 10, what I do is I can come in here and I can shift the lanes up or down and notice I'm going to go ahead and shift it up and now what's displayed as physically lane one down here on the screen is literally lane two out in the pool so now two through nine are my eight lanes that I've chosen out of the pool and that's all there is to it if it was some other oddball configuration we can do that as well keep shifting it and notice it just keeps moving around um, so this allows you the flexibility to tailor the timer to exactly what your pool has um, is physically wired for so I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna quit out of there and I'm gonna change this back to a uh, in lanes used in the pool I'm gonna change this to 10 lanes and then go back to lane mapping and I'll show you it stayed shifted so I'm gonna run these lanes normal and we've got lane 1 what's displayed here is lane 10 in is lane 1 in the pool excuse me I hit quit Remember, you want to, anytime you make a change, you want to hit the Save Setups button. That way, everything is saved, and you don't have to worry if you were to shut your timer down. All of your data and all your setups are saved in that regard. So that's all there is to the lane setups for the pool. If we go down to Scoreboard, there's a number of options here, 10 options here. The first one being a self-test, and what this will do is this will flash uh, every other eight on a numeric scoreboard. In, in alternating sequence so it'll take a group of, of, of digits and light them up with all eights after a half second it'll switch over to the next set of eights so on and so forth and it'll keep doing that until you tell it to stop if I uh, run the self-test notice the the menu changes to end self-test when I want to end it I hit the number key the number one key again define modules and blank modules if you have a scoreboard where you are wanting to change things around you can actually go in here and change what is defined when we set up a numeric scoreboard we label them or excuse me we address them lane uh, lane one would be module zero one through 
zero a let's say is lane ten now this is a hexadecimal system so it goes zero one through zero nine and then lane ten is actually zero a uh, if i want to define a module i can literally scroll down to the one i want to define and i hit the number one key on the keyboard and then i define it as what i want so in this case i'm going to change this one to zero one just for an example purpose now notice what is physically 0, 4, I'm now going to send it data for 0, 1. If I want to get rid of that definition, I'll hit the number 1 key again and I'll just redefine it back to its original, in this case, 0, 4. The number 2 option is really nice because I can show the definitions on the scoreboard. If someone has gotten in here and messed around and changed the scoreboard definitions, what we can do is we can click on this number 2 and actually have it show up on the the numeric scoreboard on the left hand side it, side it will show the uh, what's physically addressed in the in the lane in the module in that line of scoreboard and then on the right hand side it'll show you what data is being sent to it so for instance when I had remapped this 0, 04 to be 0, 01 if you had a 0, 04 module up on your scoreboard you would then see 0, 01 on the right hand side I notice I've taken all the definitions out of there, so I'm back to normal. One thing you do want to do, make sure you turn this off before you get out of here. That way it doesn't hold your scoreboard. It will actually hold your scoreboard showing the definitions uh, even if I quit out of here. Um, in this case, number we'll go down here, blank modules is the same idea. I can go down and I can blank a series, uh, you know, one or a series of modules if I need to. For whatever reason, I don't want to show scoreboard data on there, that's fine. Now, keep in mind, if I've got 10 lines worth of data and I'm only running 8 lanes in the pool, don't worry about it. The timer will take care of turning off those two lanes that you're not using uh, based on the layout, the pool layout that we, the lane mapping and pool layout that we set up in there. Number four is the number of lines in the scoreboard. As I click through, it will give me the options to be at a two line, a three line, four line, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, and this is defined the six has the ability to show multiple lanes worth of data on a single line, which is nice. It, it allows it to scroll through. So if I had only five lines worth of scoreboard, I could show ten lanes worth of data and it would just alternate back and forth between the two finish times or, uh, um, from the timer. The number five and six as well as seven pertain to a single line scoreboard and a single line scoreboard is w just one line of board as it as it says that displays all of the data from the timer um, and it will it allows us to say we have a six lane pool but we only you know we only have one line of scoreboard allows us to show all six lanes with the data um, in a kind of a scrolling fashion as as that data comes in. So on a single line board, let's say in a six lane pool, first swimmer comes down, their time is going to get locked up on the board. As soon as the second place, third place, so on and so forth come in, their data, their times will go up on the board. Once all swimmers are in, it will scroll through that data and then stop at whatever, however many times through you tell it. So this times to step one line scoreboard in this case was set to one. If I wanted it to scroll through that data five times, I would change this to five. And all I do is just click on it and input the number that I want. Uh, the number six is how many seconds I want that data, each individual bit of data to be displayed. So if I, you know, first place, I want them displayed for five seconds, so on and so forth. They're, they're all going to be on the same time interval. And then finally, number seven for the one-line scoreboard is the list of what we're going to display. So if I click on that, it shows over here what we're actually doing. So in this case, the 0F module, which is our universal module, and it's set to show place order. If I also wanted it to scroll through and show heat, I would move this over into there by hitting the insert key. If I want to delete that, I just click on it, I highlight it, and I hit delete. So this gives you the options of the things I can do. I can place order record, event heat, team scores, so on and so forth. I can hit quit and I can get out of there. The number eight is showing results in lane order. The options here are lane order, lane order with separate running time. Just as a note, you will have literally like that. 
we will have a separate running time. So if you do not have a scoreboard that has a separate line dedicated to just running time, don't choose this option because what will happen is you won't have any running time on the board. You, all you will have was spl is splits and finishes in the various lanes. The other option is to run it in place order. Normally for most people it's to run it in lane order. Uh, number nine is whether or not the scoreboard splits are cumulative or subtractive. Very straightforward. Just clicking on the number nine toggles between those. And finally, number ten is to do not emulate a ten-lane scoreboard. Uh, the biggest thing on this is if you have a matrix display, it takes, it has the ability to show lane ten as one zero, and so you would change this to emulate a ten-lane scoreboard, and so your lane and your place will both show up as one zero instead of zero a. Finally in this section let's go through the printer. Now keep in mind the printer is solely for, the, the setups in here are solely for the older uh, System 6's in which you're running a PCL6 compliant printer. I say solely for. The, the configuration of the printer was done through, for, for newer timers is done through the uh, sport loader program and done in the install uh, menu. The older printers, or the older timers, excuse me, you needed to define what printer you were using that was PCL6 compliant. You notice down here in number, number 7, I've got it defined as an HP PCL. If I have a newer timer that is USB compatible and I've already configured a printer for that, this no longer applies. I can change this to anything I want, but it, and it'll still print out of that USB port. The things that are valid on both versions of the System 6 of the store print format tells me what things I'm going to put in the list. In this case, just a race summary, and then I force a form feed out of there. Like I said before, some of the newer printers uh, queue up data if they don't have a full per page worth of data. I can also put things like split summary, relay summary, uh, and form feeds in there. And quit. I can change. I can actually put in a sponsor's message if I would like. In this case, Colorado Time System 6. You can change it to whatever you want. Always print on the store key, uh, store print button. Do not always print on the store, uh, store print button. Uh, usually this is set by default to always print on this. So as soon as the race is finished, they hit the store print button and it will start kicking out the data for the race. Number four is user defined printer control codes. For certain printers, we need to put in the printer control codes. And if you need those, it's probably best uh, on our tips on our website in the newsletters. There's a tips and tricks uh, section. Uh, if you scroll through there, and you'll find the actual one that shows what the printer control, the most common printer control codes are. And this pertains only to older system sixes that use the uh, LPT or the parallel port and are running a PCL6 compliant printer. This does not apply to a USB printer on a USB enabled system 6. Type size works for any of the system 6's. I can change it between pica, elite, condensed, and super condensed depending on how much data you want to go on, get on the page. Just as a kind of general rule of thumb, pica for 6 lane, elite for 8, condensed for 10, and super condensed for 12. Most places tend to run it at Elite, but that's totally up to you and totally up to your eyesight as to how much, how small a print you can read. Lines per inch, 8 or 6 is the choice, and that's literally just play around with it and figure out what makes the most sense and what's formatted the best for you. For the older System 6s that use the uh, uh, PCL6 compliant printer, here are your choices. So we'll go through on number 7. We'll actually scroll through and start here. Um, you have the choice of other and other, some generic printer that we don't have already predefined in here. Uh, this will also work for the Brother HL series like the 5340 or uh, 5370 printers. Uh, no printer control codes needed for those particular printers. We can run it on other or we can also run it on the HP PCL. We have support for the Citizens, the IBMs, Okie Data, HP PCL. Most uh, people are going to probably end up with a brother HL version of the printer that's the most uh, probably one of the most reliable most cost-effective printers and it's also one that works right out of the box uh, if I have that printer I can set up this printer choice as either HP PCL like I said or other 
and then down here I either have a space for minutes and hour or hours in the printouts usually they just everybody leaves that as default for space for minutes and then whether or not you want to show the event sequence title in the header of the printout